Hindu nationalists intimidate Indian atheist conference. Members of the atheist organization Shahid Bhagat Singh Bichar Manch received threats from Hindu nationalists who objected to their seventh annual conference being held at the same time as Ram Navami. And I know I'm not pronouncing that right. A holiday that celebrates the birth, uh, birthday of Hindu god Rama. As tickets went on sale, members of the organization started to receive even more threats. Despite the conference selling out exceptionally fast after a two-year pandemic postponement, the number of threats was so overwhelming that the conference had to be postponed. When the meeting finally occurred on April 24th, many of the seats sold were empty out of fear. The conference date had to be changed partially due to concerns from local law enforcement. A member of the organization, Nitin Hande, said, stated, quote, Police denied the permission to host the event on April 10th, stating that they had pressure from many right-wing fringe groups. So I wanted to cover the story because actually we talked about this earlier in April, and then now we actually get to hear a little bit more about how it panned out. So we talked about how there was this, um, uh, yeah, atheist conference, that was held to promote scientific reasoning and humanistic um, beliefs and standards. And the police basically forced the organizers to move the event to a different date under the pretext of they were giving mixed messaging. Sometimes like they were kind of like, oh, we're being pressured by right wing groups to, um, you know, make you move this event. And then Sometimes they're like, oh, no, we haven't been contacted by any explicit groups. We just don't have enough people to, um, you know, police both this conference and the other festivals that are happening on this day. Um, but more information has come out. And yes, it was these right wing groups. And also the conference actually was able to continue. But the new news is that because of all these threats from Hindutva, many people didn't even show up. There were tons of empty seats, even though people had paid for them. And the, it, it was, it was selling out so quickly oh, because so of sad. all this pressure. Yeah. What happened to saying that atheism is something that is tolerated in India? I thought that was mm -hmm. like, there's no, yeah, I don't know. Do you want to read some uh, f uh, comments from the live chat? Well, yeah, there's actually something I wanted you to show for this news. This one. Yeah. So wait, go up to the top of the page though. Um, so another reason why I wanted to talk about this is because actually this is kind of a big deal, but this incident received coverage in religion news service. Oh, and nice. this is, if, this is one of the most important, um, news sites or agencies that covers religious issues. It works directly with the Associated Press in many articles or co-publishes co this work. And um, not only do they not talk about Hindu nationalism that often, but they don't talk about atheism that often. So I was thrilled to see them post about this and write about this incident of how Hindu nationalism is threatening atheists in India. And they did a really good job of outlining this incident, but then they also really highlighted the stories of different Indian atheists and their experiences. And so they interviewed people like um, Seema Nayak, a 42-year-old engineer from Maharashtra state, said she had been an atheist since childhood. Quote, I've always refused to participate in religious festivals and rituals as it's against my logic. I did not allow them to perform certain pujas on my son, she said, referring to Hindu rituals. Her rejection of religion has drawn criticism from her in-laws and others. Quote, many of my relatives don't talk to me. But I have maintained my stand and I will not participate in any religious event, even to please my relatives. Though her husband is also an atheist and supports her, Nayak said atheism is often harder for women who are expected to carry forward religious traditions in the family. Um, and they also interviewed Indian ex-Muslims. 
And um, like there was one professor that they interviewed who said, being an atheist said the professor, quote, gives you a support system and you know you have people to go to when the community ostracizes you. But he said atheists could use more support, suggesting that a helpline and online resources could create a safer environment for non-believers. Um, and I don't know, I was so excited to see such a major publication highlighting this issue and highlighting the fact that Hindu nationalism, nationalism is also impacting non-believers, not only religious minorities, because that's often yeah. what gets the most attention. And um, also just the stories of like everyday Indian atheists and what their experience is like. Um, I, I was so excited. It's not typical that you see this kind of coverage from such a big publication. Right. Yeah. Good point. Here, read, um, there's some like. Oh, wait, no, that was from a different story. Okay. Um, Forever Stormy is saying there's so many Hindu festivals every week that it will never be a good time to hold an atheist mm. conference. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so th this, is a, this is a good point. This is an important point. All right. Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Avabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below. 